Hey, I'm Kev K, and Mr. Cole, and welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross Career. Has Hillman returned with a bang? Lots of bangs. In the main event, last time out in California, can he do much better in San Diego? Uh, so we have it up at the start of the heat race. Remember, we've got to finish in the top four. If you want to qualify for the main event, I'd always go through the semi finals, and if we don't do well in the semi finals, it'll be the last chance qualifiers. So we could potentially have three races before we do the main event. But last time it was only this one. So let's see if we can do that again as we get very crowded at the start here. Looking for the inside line. Just about surviving. And oh, not like that rider though. Millsaps down. Let's win fifth. We've got to finish in the top four. Oh, that will do. Jump over everyone. Let's got Dean Wilson in front. And this very dry surface here in San Diego. No water to be seen at all. Good to see. Let's try and make this a triple easy. Let's now we try and chase down Dean Wilson, even though we don't need to. But if we keep on his pace, we should hopefully be keeping the riders behind. At least that's the theory. Let's got a 1.4 second gap to them. And once again, it's looking very good in a heat race. Around the circuit in San Diego, I think we're better at than Anaheim. Definitely seems to be much better for high oh, like in the river, much easier. And sections, if you mess up, not as severe a penalty as you saw in Anaheim. So this should suit high side. And it definitely is. Look at this, down the inside for the lead on the second lap. Again, we've got probably five laps here in this heat race as he stays ahead if Wilson just runs wide though we have to take the shortcut but he does lose the lead to one of the Wilson brothers he's got poor Sale his enemy for the main event in California behind in third looking to make it through the main event so is Baggett as Dungey down in 11th. Maybe there's a tactical from him. From the number one. Just likes to get his practice in around these circuits. Oh, you've got to follow suit. Oh, it's bagging up to third now. He's got Weston. In fifth. Still not sure how to pronounce his surname. But we can definitely say his first name now. But as you can see, he's... It's so easy to get into a flow around this circuit compared to Anaheim as well. So it's a bit more rookie friendly. I know he's already raced in 450s as oh, so, but it's been a while, so he feels like a rookie this season. As he takes the lead back. Bon Wilson, great move. Taking a bit of a higher line in that penultimate corner. Almost catastrophe there, chopping in front of Wilson. But again, a 58. And he's seven tenths ahead of him on this third lap. And actually, this might be the penultimate lap, looking at the time. I think we get across the line. Or we have to do another one. We'll see. May tactically slow down near the end of this lap. That's all that is nicely into that corner. There's the winner from California in fifth, Cole Seeley. Just missing out. A spot to get into the main event, but he's left on a second behind Purcell and Baggett. Yeah, this high side runs wide there. It's not what you want to do. Won't triple that. Doesn't look like you have to slow down. Oh, so here comes Wilson back. Trying to take back that lead. Has it gone to the final? That, that was timed perfectly, wasn't it? To make sure we do one less lap in this event. This little gets the back end out. It had to get it down to first so they keep the momentum going. Let's go through the right handers. 1.1 behind is Wilson. Let's go through that. Love that corner. That left hander. So easy to carry momentum through. Better than this right hander though. Bit tougher, especially as you arrive at that corner at such 
a pace. That's no! High side down! As he lost the win to Wilson as he goes flying. Wilson deserves the chop block. Sealy in third. Had a bag in. Looks like Paul Sahil will be losing out in fear. I'm sure we're very unhappy at that. Doesn't matter we lost the win in the final. It just matters that we're through to the main event. First time around again. As we have Baggett also making it through on his KTM. So Hans Van and Honda through as well. And then Paul Sale missing out in fifth ahead of Weston. And Ryan Dungey in seventh. Simmons, Johnny Taylor and Malcolm Stewart are foe from California. In tenth as we look through. The name's got Millsap. So he crashed in the open that down in 17th. So let's see who's joining Hillman in the main event. And if you're going to much better go at it this time around. And before we go... But patch update, you've now got Space Boy and Go With The Flow. You might have to choose Go With The Flow. Look how funky that is. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen. We are in California for another spectacular round of Monster Energy AMA Supercross at FIM World Championship. Petco Park in San Diego is packed full of enthusiastic race fans who are anxious to get this one underway. It's main event time in San Diego. Listen to that crowd. He is definitely the favorite. Let's see if he can capitalize on that energy and get the win. Yeah, so we are revving up in the middle. Next to Wilson, Seeley, Muskin, Dungey. As we get underway with a good start. Backing it off though. For the first corner, he might take the whole shot. Great job from high side on this opening out to take the lead. Head of Roxon. And you've got Dungey in fourth, Seedy in fifth. What about this for a turnaround? After the first corner in Anaheim, he's picking his bike up. When the first corner here, he's got the whole shot and it's now racing away from the German. And his fellow KTM runner in Dungey, the champ. He's got Dean Wilson in fourth, having a good start. Not falling back. And Seeley in fifth as Dungey makes up to third though ahead of Rilson. So we've got some heavy rates behind. <laughs> Let's see if High Side can handle it. Hopefully you won't High Side. As we go on to the second at 1.4 ahead. What a start. With Baggett in last. I've been looking so good in the heat. American right at the back behind. At a seat. As we go over this section, you can see we've gotten a bit better at this course than last season. And I remember, I side definitely did have some pace, but just wasn't consistent round there. But now he's got pace, and as you can see, he's got some consistency with him. And damn, son, is he racing away now from the field? 2.6 there to Roxon. And his foes from Anaheim are a more distant memory now. It's Jason Anderson up to fifth now. They're going to make some moves early on. Getting to the top five ahead of Dean Wilson. Also got Chad Reed in the top ten. And so you've got your usual suspects near the back. And now Trent Conrad in last. Or Canrad. We go over these jumps. Such a satisfying course here. I think Anaheim is more satisfying to nail, but just the ride round. So high speed. Got some good jumps as well. Just got much better flow. In my eyes. The CD up to third ahead of Dungey. Cole wanting to get back on that podium. Wanting to enhance that championship lead. It was all almost messed up there. As you can see, we're trying to develop this wide line. Hopefully that won't be rutted too much as well. It's into the 57s, 57, 57.6. 57, He's got Purcell just outside the top center. Oh, it's Muskin. Very disappointing from the Frenchman down in 12. It's all a bit wide. From high side, can he recover? Just about. 
He's having to learn how to take these alternate routes around these circuits, isn't he? he just about survives there. And he'll be right back up there in the championship. I know it's just the second round, but still, just good to get a win or a podium under your belt early in the season, carry some confidence into the next few rounds. Let's go over that jump. No, I'd not even have to change gears again, taking that wide line. Because that inside will get rutted as this race goes on. And they're going to have another 57-57-4. 3.3 header, Roxon, Seeley third, Dungey fourth, Anderson fifth. And it's like, unfortunately, Honda's now at the back behind Weston. Having their own private battle over the wooden spoon. But for Hillman, he's having a battle with himself over the gold medal here, the trophy. Get some silver back in that cabinet for the MX2, MXGP champion. 250 East champion, almost the West champion as well. Just missing out in heartbreaking circumstances in Vegas. But now looking ahead, a 450 Supercross title, and then most certainly be right up there as one of the greats. Alongside Ricky Carmichael, the Everts in Europe, multiple champs. Thorpe as well. Remember, Brit, very good. Yes, go. It's almost wide, very wide. And the hair, pin up setting the truck blocks. Well, he's just keeping the marshals busy, I'm guessing. As he's still two point ahead of Roxon. Roxon, very good consistency behind as we're into the second half of this race. Seeding third, holding off Dungeon. Look at Chad Reed rolling back the years in fifth. Moose Yamaha. Right on the tail of Dungey as well. Go on, Chad. Take fourth. And he does. Head of Dungey. Great job from the veteran. Oh, but Dungey's taking it immediately back, heading into the jumps, it looks like. There's a bit of an off lap there, 59. It's Justin Barsha back on form in the top 10, along with Millsaps. And that disastrous heat race, Nick's to be covering well in the main event. As we've got some fantastic battles happening behind, but for high side, it's been mostly plain sailing as this event. But as you can see, Sun get rutted a bit more, going to be sideways a bit more as well. Rocks and still 2.5 back, so consistent from the German. It's old German efficiency coming to the fore, isn't it? It's like an Audi engine. The Porsche being hammered around the North Life or the Nürburgring. He's just being metronomic behind. Here's a Roxen. Well, Hardside may have the pace. He's been a bit more ragged so far. Let's see if he'll cool his jets a bit. As we come towards the end of this main event, dips into the 58. There's all Reed dropping out of the top five. Jason Anderson taking that position back. Still got your usual suspects right at the back. Now, this has been a dream race. Taking that whole shot, very important at the start. Not having a battle with the arseholes as we had in Anaheim. As Roxon definitely got a solid gap in second ahead of Seedy, who's got a solid gap ahead of Dungey, who's now got a bit of a gap ahead of Chad Reed. Battled back into the top five head of Anderson. Seems to be spreading out now in the final quarter of this race. So once again, taking that wide line. Remember, we've got the toughest opponents here. Is Dean Wilson still in the top 10? Baggett's still down there, battling with Stewart for 17th in it. like Cooper Webb down as well. Not very good. The guy who expected a storm in 450s, but just hasn't been the case. Since stepping up from 250, he's been very good on that. That was Cooper Webb. 
Uh, so we've got three laps to go, I think. Or two and a half laps. Or three and a half laps, should I say. About 4.4 out of Roxon. Was the metronome broken slightly? Behind. Oh, clipping. Trap blocks on the inside. Be tough to make a triple here. Case that jump. Well, not the joint, thankfully. Still upright. It's very interesting. He wins that battle for fifth again into the 59s. And that allows Roxton to be 2.6 seconds back at the line. And let's see how Baggett and Stewart battling for 16th. So just like in Anaheim, if you drop towards the back, it's very tough to make your way through the field. As Blake Baggett is showing his main event, fellow KTM runner. As it is opened up behind. See, he's gaining slightly on Roxon. 2.4 back. Still, be tough for the Honda man to catch the German. There's Reed. 14.3 seconds back. 3.7 behind Dungy. He's around 5 seconds back or third, so be hard for the champ to get onto the podium for more consistent points at the start of this season another top 5 even if he's not used to it all counts towards the champ so it's Muskin is in the top 10 in 8th maybe Nick in the battle his way up to 6th maybe even for a top 5 we'll see if that battle develops actually for the top 5 get some more runners for that as he's got 2 to go here in San Diego, it has been a dream under the lights for a high side. It's had the odd detour, this race. I wouldn't say it's been perfect, but he has had the pace. That's the main thing. Of the Anaheim way, it looked like he had the pace in the heat races, but the main event was a nightmare. This has been a total, so this has been a dream. It's all he case that jump note. Going to the penultimate corner of this penultimate lap. Roxon's still lurking. He's not dropped back at all. He does a 58. He's still just 3.5 back. You've had to be consistent in this main event. Because there's not intense pressure from the German, but it's just pressure. If you make a mistake, he's right in your tail. Same for you for high side, though. He has not done that. As he's got Dungy 11.5, about four ahead of Reed. 5.3 off a podium for the number one. Let's go over this whoop section. That's the only thing about this course. Maybe you need some more whoop sections. Because you've got these jumps. Which are nice. Just a whoop section here, maybe. Would have been nice. Let's go into the penultimate corner. He can just cruise it home now. And the mega jump for the fans at the finish. As Hardside takes his first victory. With Roxon in second ahead of CD. It's a Hondas. Two Hondas on the podium once again. With Dungy in fourth. Reed in fifth on his Yamaha ahead of Anderson. And his has Farner. And Muskin recovered to seventh in the head of Dean Wilson. Justin Barsha grabs the top ten on his Suzuki. Great job. From the American Air. Oh, Davey Mills saps he recovered well from his heat race disaster to grab a top 10 in the main event on his KTM. Then Justin Brayton, then Porcel, then Jake Reimer, then Brock Trickle, then Trent Canard, then his Cooper Webb in 16 on his Yamaha. An awful main event for him. The Vince Freist, then we've got Blake Baggett down in 18th and ahead of Malcolm Stewart in 19th. Not a good main event for the Suzuki's apart from Barsha. With, again, that Honda in last. Those three rode the wheels off their machines. We have a tremendous championship fight brewing. That's a nice trophy to put in the cabinet. Has Hillman launch himself into the top ten after that victory in the second round of the season. While well, CD leads by a single point. The Rocks and Jason Allison in third a point ahead of Dungey. Muskin rounds out the top five with Chad Reed in seven three points behind. High side, and then we've got Brayton, Dean Wilson, Davey Millsaps rounds out the top 10 on 24 points. There's 23 riders score points so far this season with Patrick Elkins, the last of them on his 
Suzuki has 41 riders so far this season. Justin Calhoun in last on his Yamaha. So what an event for high side. That's more like it. That's what we want to see at 450 level. As I believe that is actually his first 450 Supercross win. Isn't it? As he shows that extraordinary turn. He definitely did Ralph Sheen. As you look at his fans, you're my hero. Oh no, they're all in love with him. Once again, we're all well done. High side. We have taken race followed by a victory, which was inequitable. The best there is. But let's see if we can prove it around Age or Stadium. A second visit there with a different course in Hanoi, California next time out. Uh, so unfortunately, I'll see you then.